In June of 2020, there were some protests, some riots, and plenty of violence in response to St. George Floyd's death. After several days of peaceful demonstration and nights of more violent and destructive demonstrations, New York City imposed a curfew to get people off the streets at night. As the 11 p.m. deadline to get off the streets approached, bands of protesters marched peacefully through Manhattan and Brooklyn. But police simultaneously responded to numerous reports of roving groups of people smashing their way into shops and emptying them of merchandise. The doors of Macy's flagship in Manhattan were breached. Police pulled two handcuffed men out and put them into a van. People rushed into a Nike store, carried out armloads of clothing. Near Rockefeller Center, storefront windows were smashed. Multiple people were arrested. Bank windows were smashed. Wreckage littered the inside of an AT&T store. There were fires on the street. Cars were damaged. Police cars were set on fire. Rocks and bottles were being thrown at cops. And they were trying to keep things orderly. Now, there was a specific event in Mott Haven. Mott Haven is a small part of the Bronx in New York City. Things got out of control, and it was starting to get violent. The cops had to take control to keep the city from being burnt to the ground. So they had to get a little more aggressive as the crowd escalated their aggression. They used a technique called kettling. It's where the cops surround a large group of people and they prevent them from leaving so they can be arrested and taken into custody and charged for the crimes they're committing. I know this sounds awful. How dare cops arrest people for doing crimes? But that's what happened. Okay, enough of the background stuff. Everyone remembers what happened. Mobs of people were destroying the city and the cops had to do something. So they started arresting people. Zip ties, pepper spray, basic crowd control. The leftist protesters, they've never been told no. So this was a foreign concept. So what did they do? Did they fight the cops? <laughs> no. Soy lattes and reading Karl Marx to your blue-haired feminist girlfriend doesn't give you a lot of muscle mass, so no, they didn't fight back. So once they were basically hogtied and thrown into police vans, they cried about how much the handcuffs hurt their overly moisturized, delicate skin. And once they finally made bail, the bail, which was sponsored by Kamala Harris and her team, seriously, look that up, that happened. Once they got home, they told their wealthy, white, privileged parents that they were treated badly and we should sue them. So guess what? No kidding, seriously. They sued the cops and they sued the city of New York because they were arrested and treated badly during a riot. Okay, you might want to sit down for this one. You know it's bad because I'm making a video about it. New York City has agreed to settle the lawsuits. Each... Black Lives Matter protester, sorry, sorry, now demonstrator, they have to be called demonstrators now, will be paid $21,500 because they were arrested during a riot. And that was unfair, and it hurt their feelings. You gotta be kidding me. But goddammit, it gets even worse. Each protester, sorry, demonstrator, will get an additional $2,500 if they were given a legal summons to appear in court. Oh, and of course, they're also going to cover any legal fees. The reason they brought the court case, and let me quote this, quote, the police were also alleged to have excessively tightened plastic handcuffs on arresting protesters, which caused pain and bruising, end quote. My first reaction is utter shock and confusion. New York City is paying out over $7.7 .7 million to the people who terrorize small businesses, set cop cars on fire, and threw rocks at cops. If there's one cop who shows up to work tomorrow, I'll be surprised. But the cops that do show up, well, they're not going to be making any arrests. Why would they? If they arrest the wrong person like a well-connected lefty, or they put handcuffs on a little too tightly and they suffer a moment of inconvenience, well, they're going to get sued. A cop would have to be a special kind of idiot 
to make any arrests under these conditions. Once again, crime pays. So if you need a few bucks, set a police car on fire during a riot. Okay, at this point, I think legally I need to say don't set cop cars on fire. That's a bad idea. But uh, if you look at the evidence, it seems like a good way to make money. I'm very confused. Now, I always like to look into the future to see where this goes. Now, this country is definitely heading into a civil conflict. All-out civil war? Who knows? But when rules only apply to a certain group of people, and the other group of people can do whatever they want, and even get paid for it, something's going to break soon. One group has been handed life on a silver platter. They've never faced any resistance. The other group has been kicked off social media, and it's been an uphill battle every day. Which group is stronger? Not politically stronger, but actually stronger. If you face resistance every day, if you're always swimming against the current, you're going to become one hell of a strong swimmer. If you've been coasting down Lazy River all your life, you're weak. These two forces are going to meet one day, and the cops and the legal system won't be around. I can tell you who I'm going to place my bets on. We're getting close, and more legal decisions like this are going to tear the country apart. Just about everyone has already picked sides. The media is stoking the flames. This summer is going to be interesting. If you have any sense, stay away from large cities. And God help you if you want to go to any of these stupid protests. So what's your opinion? We got a couple of choices. Back the blue, Black Lives Matter, or Giant Asteroid 2024. Leave some comments below. I know this article is a little crazy and I'm certain you got opinions. So uh, I'm going to go make some more videos. I'll see you again later.